Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. This is number 11 in my ongoing series of topic videos. Videos in which I ask my viewers to weigh in on a certain uh, topic related to art. Now, this past week I asked my viewers about the importance of originality. Uh, I asked them specifically to say, uh, is originality important to you as a creative person? Uh, and as a, a consumer of content, do you require uh, originality? Uh, or is it not such a big deal to you? Well, uh, people came through with, uh, you know, over a thousand comments, and I went through and pulled my 12 favorite ones. So let's go ahead and start with, I'm going to do a sort of a 1A, 1B here, because uh, a lot of comments are uh, fairly similar to this one here. Uh, originality is something non-existent that we cannot reach. All the ideas found in every form of art come from something that already exists. This comment from uh, Ivern the Green Father. And then here, as I said, 1B. Originality is an illusion. At this point, nothing is really original. Everyone borrows and uses ideas from something else, even without knowing it. Uh, this from Artistic Swordsman. And uh, it is a very common uh, belief that we have reached uh, a time now uh, in human history where originality is no longer possible. Indeed, some people, I believe, are interpreting the meaning of the word originality so strictly, they might even say that it has never been possible. Everyone was always uh, taking some sort of an idea from some other person who came before them. Uh, and in that sense, no one has ever, <laughs> throughout the entire course of human history, been truly uh, original. Um, and, you know, I can respect people who have this uh, uh, very strict uh, uh, definition, a very high threshold for what uh, real originality is. Uh, I do sort of wonder, you know, what is the word for if we can never apply it to anything? Uh, if we have created such a high uh, bar for, um, you know, uh, being absolutely original, and I think we, we're maybe confusing things here by uh, thinking that uh, originality means having no influences of any kind. Uh, and I'm not sure that that is really what uh, people mean, uh, usually, when they use the word originality. Um, but anyway, I wanted to present this point of view because uh, it, it seems quite prevalent. A lot of people seem to firmly believe uh, either that originality has never been possible, really, uh, or indeed uh, that uh, it used to be possible at some point in the past, but now, because so many people have created so many things, uh, that we live in an age where it is no longer possible, or that, you know, the whole goal of pursuing uh, originality is um, maybe uh, doomed to failure. So I wanted to present that, uh, because it certainly does seem to be a widely held belief. But I'm going to move on now to kind of the opposite belief, and this is from J to S. There are an infinite amount of ideas out there, and only a finite amount of them have been done. I think the whole nothing is original thing is just semantics and missing the point. I definitely wanted to quote this because it brings out this word semantics, uh, in which you find yourself sort of arguing about the, the definition uh, of a word, and uh, it kind of makes the whole argument pointless. <laughs> and the word <laughs> in question here is originality. If you're going to define it in such a strict way, uh, indeed, it becomes impossible to, to apply the word to anything. Uh, and I do wonder, um, you know, why would we create such an incredibly uh, demanding threshold for even using the word? originality. I, I think of it as more of like a spectrum uh, with highly original on one side and sort of, you know, by the numbers, unoriginal on the other side. And most things are somewhere on this spectrum of originality. Um, you know, I would say, for example, uh, back in the 1990s when the movie Groundhog Day came out, uh, I for one would say that counts as an original idea. I had never seen uh, the premise of that movie uh, done before. Now, someone smarter than me may say, oh, no, he got the idea from somebody else who had done it this way or whatever, I suppose, but I, I'm not aware of it. And, I, and to me, that gives me hope that it is still possible, it is still possible to come up with new ideas. 
Uh, and so uh, I don't normally take sides <laughs> in these things, but I suppose I am taking sides on this one with Jade S. I am an optimist in this idea. Yes, there have been millions, billions of people over the years creating things, but that does not mean that it is no longer possible uh, to come up with uh, something fresh and new and original. It's harder. It's arguably harder uh, than maybe it was uh, in the past, but I do think it is still possible. Unfortunately, it does sort of come down to semantics, and uh, we can find ourselves in an endless argument loop over what qualifies uh, as original. But I think those two um, different viewpoints kind of sum up a, a tug of war that goes on there when we discuss originality. I suppose I should say a, a word before we go much further about what I'm working on here today. This is a, an illustration of a, uh, a sort of shrine uh, that you sometimes see in Japan um, dedicated to the earth god, as I understand it, that farmers might um, have near their uh, rice fields to uh, so that they can pray for a good crop. And uh, you know, as I do these videos, I like people to have something to look at instead of just a blank sheet of paper, and that's basically uh, what I'm doing, just sort of for my own amusement, and yours, hopefully, <laughs> working on this illustration. Let's move on to the uh, next comment that I chose from this guy. Originality is good. However, some people tend to get too original and end up having their work only resonate with very few people. Um, I thought that this was an important point, that uh, there are levels of originality, and when you uh, become super experimental, you maybe do uh, create something that can't be appreciated by um, the average person, let us just say. Um, makes me think of uh, in the 20th century when musicians were trying to push the frontiers of music, and they started creating very challenging music, sort of 12-tone things that uh, do, do not have traditional melodies. Um, and uh, indeed, they I think they almost uh, willingly said, I'm not going to create music for the average person. I'm blazing a trail into the new, uh, a new world of music, trying to literally create a whole new type of music. Um, and that in itself sort of shows that it's still possible. But um, you can become so experimental that... Um, the average person just doesn't get it, just doesn't know what you're doing. And I think it's interesting to just, uh, without making any judgments, put that out there as a reality. Um, that you have a choice as an artist in terms of how ex experimental you get, and maybe it's not important for you to reach a huge audience. Maybe you are, you know, maybe you're the type of artist who only wants to reach that small group of people who get it, you know? And I think that that's... Um, that's a legitimate way of creating music. You know, I think I think jazz in a way, a lot of certain types of jazz, from the get-go, they were like, no, I'm not trying to reach the average person who wants to whistle a tune, <laughs> walking down the street. No, I'm uh, I'm going for this small group of people who who sort of understand and appreciate what I'm doing here. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, I think artists are always being sort of divided between these two instincts, one to reach a wide variety of people communicate with a wide variety of people, and then this other instinct of being true to yourself, being experimental, doing something entirely new. Um, and in a way, I want this video, this topic video, to, to make you ask yourself, what kind of artist are you? What kind of artist do you want to be? Uh, because they're both legitimate in my eyes. Anyway, let's move on now to the next uh, comment that I got. Uh, this one from Azu Raijin. This one is very pro-originality. Originality is, in my opinion, the essence of art. Great art is the materialization of unique ideas, of ways of viewing the world, of ways of life. Art is, and should be, more than just entertainment. I wanted to get in at least one comment in here that was seemed kind of 100% pro-originality, because I saw a lot of people to my mind, sort of a surprising number of people discounting the importance of originality. And uh, this was a learning experience for me in the sense of coming to understand that for a lot of people, uh, they don't require originality. And um, so I saw some people saying it's the least important thing uh, when it comes to art. 
Uh, but certainly, uh, traditionally, I think most uh, people have felt something along the lines of what Azu Rai Jean here is saying, that, you know, uh, originality is key to great art. And you look at someone like Vincent van Gogh, and a big part of why he uh, is so admired now, even if he wasn't necessarily during his day, was how original he was. He, he kind of created a whole new type of painting. Um, and indeed, he had influences. We come back to this argument about uh, what does the word originality mean. But I would say that you know we can apply the word originality to uh, Van Gogh. Surely, uh, he was an original, and uh, in a way, from a certain point of view, that is that is what art is all about: um, trying to find some new way, being true to yourself, pushing things forward. Uh, so I wanted to get in uh, at least one comment that was kind of um, not hedging at all, just coming out and saying straight, originality is what it's all about when it comes uh, to art, because indeed we had a lot of people sort of uh, coming up with in-between views on this. This one maybe uh, represents that, from that one dude, Axtria. Well, most of Disney's classics are retold fairy tales, but they presented it in a way that made us fall in love with it. So just because something is unoriginal doesn't mean you can't make it your own. Uh, indeed, yeah, it's, it, I, I would say most of those great uh, classic Disney uh, uh, animated films are based on pre-existing uh, properties. Uh, it certainly has not stopped them from succeeding. It has not stopped those movies from being admired. And I think it is sort of, uh, this is maybe the ultimate example of uh, putting your own spin on it. Uh, and Disney is really good at that, you know. Uh, the other day I, I drew a picture of Rapunzel. I think that's a, a great example of, you know, everybody knew the story of Rapunzel. You could, right from the beginning, you could have said, oh, this again, you know. But no, they, they added their own thing to it. They put in the Disney, that classic Disney spin on it and uh, and it became, in my opinion, quite a successful uh, piece of storytelling. Um, so it is sort of interesting how originality is uh, sometimes to be sought and other times maybe not considered so important. I find it a sort of endlessly fascinated, fascinating topic. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll agree as we continue to this next one from Anime Heart HD. If you are aware of the tropes you're using, you can deconstruct or subvert them at your leisure. I thought this was interesting because it kind of shows that um, you almost need to study the tropes, the, uh, some people might say, cliches, the sort of ways that things have always been done, the ways that the audience expects things to go, and then you can subvert that. You can deliberately make your story um, go against expectations. Uh, and to me, this sort of means the, the it sort of shows a person who's being both unoriginal and original at the same time, right? They're choosing to work within a genre. Let's say you're going to do a zombie story. Well, that's a pre-existing uh, type of story that has been around for a long time. You can't claim that you're an original, having you know you're using the word zombie, right? <laughs> Some of this is copied, but you can take the expectations of what people think a zombie story is going to be like, and you can uh, subvert those expectations and do something new. And I think we've seen a lot of that, actually, in recent years, people trying to uh, break the rules of what uh, someone expects from a certain type of story. Um, so, yeah, it is sort of interesting. So you can be original as you, even when you start with something that is, by definition, unoriginal. Uh, anyway, I thought that was worth... Um, listening to and let's move on now to number seven maybe the last one before i'm going to take a little break so that i can uh, make more progress on this illustration in time lapse this one from jesse fox when things are done over and over again the exact same way it gets so boring that i don't want to see it anymore i am starting to really hate memes because they are so repetitive now uh, I thought that this was a, an interesting topic, especially in terms of our current culture that does. It is sort of a meme culture. We do see a lot of stuff on the internet that, that consists of pre-existing things uh, that maybe someone has altered a little bit. Ideally, they've taken 
some sort of pre-existing meme and they've put their own spin on it or they've done something to it. But I'm seeing an awful lot of stuff where there is no, <laughs> there's no spin being put on it. They're just grabbing this pre-existing thing and they're like, well, you know, in place of actually typing a comment here, I'm just going to show this clip of Citizen Kane <laughs> slowly clapping with this uptight look on his face. Um, and yeah, at, at one point that was an original thing. Uh, years ago to uh, post in place of a comment. I would say it, it isn't anymore. We've seen it a million times and um, at the risk of being the old man who's like, get off my lawn! <laughs> I do fear that we live in an age of uh, what I call fill-in-the-blanks cleverness where people just kind of are grabbing these pre-existing things and tossing, you know, like uh, a number of years ago, I felt like everybody was saying, just saying at the end of every comment, you know, that you would see on Facebook or wherever, just saying. And I was like, is this like, are you magically making this more clever by tacking on this tired old phrase, just saying, you know, thankfully I think that finally went away, but it's, it's there's always a new one, <laughs> right? There's always some new little phrase that everyone starts, you know, uh, sticking onto things or like, you know, on Twitter, instead of giving me some piece of information, they, they'll begin with, this is just your periodic reminder that blah, 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 you know, and it's like, again, well, just tell me what you want to tell me. You don't need to put it in the form of the, <laughs> this periodic reminder, you know? Uh, and I, I do think in the age of the internet, these things get beaten into the ground so quickly that uh, I really hesitate before using any of these pre-existing phrases. Just as a creative person, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way. Well, like I said, I want to... Um, take a brief break here and do time lapse to get further along with this illustration, but then we will be back with comments 8 through 12. Well, I think we've got enough done here that I can go ahead and move on to the remaining uh, comments. This one comes from Girl Bassist, who says, I see a lot of artists, particularly young ones, that don't know how to differentiate between their work being influenced by another artist and ripping off said artist. Uh, yeah, very interesting topic there, and maybe I can focus on that in, in another video. Uh, about how, you know, being influenced by someone is not the same as, as plagiarism and just basically stealing uh, what they're doing. What I've always said is that um, if you see someone else's idea, you need to sort of drill down to the core basis of that idea uh, rather than uh, take any of the particular details of the idea. For example, um, you know, uh, Harry Potter if you tell a story about a magician who goes to a school full of magicians, you're um, very much going to be accused of plagiarism. Uh, if you sort of drill down to the basis of that, uh, that idea and say, well, there's a, a, a young person who finds uh, that there um, a, is some sort of power that he uh, or she can learn about and uh, master, uh, then you're getting, f um, f you know, vague enough that you're not necessarily going to be accused of, you know, indeed, Harry Potter probably could be accused of having borrowed that idea from some other thing that uh, that has that at the core. You can uh, you can borrow the base idea, the sort of general idea. You cannot borrow the specifics, the details. Uh, and to me, that would be the, the key difference there between a, um, you know, being influenced and... Uh, stealing the exact uh, idea. But again, I think I probably should do a separate video that, that uh, goes into that in greater detail. Here from Max Chivington. In my personal opinion, it's harder to be original starting out. If I look back at my art and music I've created, they were all influenced by another artist. I think that originality comes a bit later. I thought this was interesting that uh, 
you uh, may find that uh, at the beginning of your journey as an artistic person that you are very much under the sway of some other person. I've heard a lot of people say this in interviews, you know, like uh, film directors and so forth. You know, in the early days I was just uh, copying this other person that I admired so much and it took me a while to find my own voice. Now, conversely, there can be a situation, and I think I had a little bit of this, where at the beginning of your career, you don't know what you're doing, and in that sense, you have a, a type of creativity that doesn't exist once you do know what you're doing. Um, you, you don't know what the rules are, so you start kind of accidentally breaking all those rules, and you have to be careful later on that you become a little too familiar with those rules, and uh, start creating something that's less original, so it can actually go in the opposite direction depending on what uh, kind of person you are. But certainly, uh, I have heard a lot of people uh, say that they, they felt their early work was hobbled by a lack of originality and that they only began to find their own voice, their own way of doing things uh, later on. Let's move on now to number 10 from The White Chibu. Originality is hard because your ideas could be created already without you knowing it. Uh, I wanted to point this one out. There are a lot of ideas that can be arrived at independent, independently by two or three or more different people. And uh, we have to be careful about accusing people of plagiarism or stealing uh, when in fact they sort of innocently stumbled onto the same idea that someone else came up with. And certain ideas are so uh, basic that um, you got to be careful about uh, flinging around <laughs> accusations of plagiarism uh, because indeed uh, a lot of things are, um, you know, being arrived at by similar uh, people uh, all over the world every day and uh, they did not necessarily get the idea directly from another person. It's a tricky topic and uh, in a way we only know if the, if the person is being forthcoming and honest if they acknowledge, yes, I was familiar with this person's work and, uh, and, and that's kind of where I got the idea versus I've never even heard of this person, how can you accuse me of having um, stolen my idea uh, from them? Anyway, worth uh, considering before you go on the attack <laughs> against someone that, that seems to have stolen an, an idea. Uh, let's look now at this one from Brian... <laughs> Brian Amaniac? Uh, Brian Am Anime Amaniac? I'm not sure. we got so many different words crying out for me to try to pronounce that. Number 11, I think originality is important, but it needs to be originality of a genuine sort. Trying to make work for the sake of being innovative and groundbreaking oftentimes results in works that feel highly pretentious. I thought this was quite interesting. Um, if your main goal is to be original and you're focusing so hard on that, there could be something a, a little inauthentic about, uh, you know, all I'm trying to do is uh, break the rules and uh, sh show off how original I can be, um, that it really should come from a more organic place, maybe just by by nature this thing that you're pursuing is original. Uh, I thought that was an interesting thing worth considering. Um, I don't know if it really applies to this, but uh, I, one thing that you need to keep in mind when you when you break the rules of, say, storytelling, uh, that the rules are there for a reason. And when you do break them, you run the risk uh, sometimes of alienating the, the uh, audience. Um, those of you who know the movie um, No Country for Old Men, I'm not going to give it away, but the ending is very unconventional. The ending of that movie breaks the rules. And uh, people are consequently a little divided. I think most people <laughs> agree that it's a great film. But uh, some people, and including myself, have get a little disoriented by the uh, by what happens at the end of that film, be you know, because it defies the expectations of the audience and what what we feel is one of the uh, basic rules of storytelling. Sorry, I can't. I don't want to go into into detail what I'm talking about here because it would give away the ending of that movie. But then why did you bring it up, Curly? Anyway, it's just something to be aware of. Uh, breaking rules. Uh, you uh, and and doing something new uh, is exciting, and uh, you may get praise from some people. You may uh, find yourself alienating others. Uh, that the rules are kind of there for a reason, 
and uh, you you defy them at your peril sometimes in the eyes of certain uh, members of the audience. And the last one, this uh, very tricky to pronounce, Huitzilopochtli, I think. Uh, given the length of human history, chances are that multiple people have already had any idea you come up with. Instead of obsessing over ensuring that what you're doing has never been done before, focus on telling the stories you want to tell, drawing the pictures you want to draw, and so on. I thought this would be a good one to end on. Um, kind of brings together a lot of the different stuff that we've been talking about here today. And uh, indeed, if you're obsessing over originality that can maybe sort of freeze you in your tracks and uh, I think the worst thing that can happen is if you feel that uh, originality is a requirement and because none of your ideas are original that you should just give up and not make anything um, certainly that would be a terrible uh, state of affairs to arrive at and um, I would in, in such a situation say, no, your, your story doesn't need to be 100% original. Just go ahead, jump in. You'll find some way of making it original along the way. Uh, and I do fear that the unintended consequence of some of these early comments that we said, you know, originality is impossible. Uh, if you firmly believe that, then you're, then you're not even going to try, right? You say, well, it can't be, I can't be original. Uh, <laughs> It, it is absolutely impossible, so I'll just go ahead and not try. Um, that seems like a very dangerous thing. We should at least give it a shot. And uh, in my opinion, it is still uh, possible to be original. I think we have uh, come to the end of this video, though. I do want to very quickly just say thank you to anyone who decides to pre-order Manga Art, my latest book. It's coming out June 6th, uh, and uh, super, super grateful. At this stage, is it a pre-order, or are you just ordering? Because June 6th is coming up real fast. Anyway, big thanks to anyone who supports me by getting that book or any of my books, but I'm going to go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.